Hey, howdy everybody. So in this discussion, we'll just go do a very straightforward walkthrough in Jupyter Notebook of some Python code for display or plotting of spatial data. And so if you're interested in following along, you can go ahead and go to Geostats Guy on GitHub, go to Python numerical demos. And if you come down, you'll see that there is a Geostats Pi plotting data IPYNB, which is an IPython notebook or a Jupyter notebook. And so you can download it. Easy enough to download, just click on the clone or download button and you'll be able to download the entire zip file with all of the files from this repository and you put it in a working directory. I've shown in a previous video how to load that into Jupyter notebook. And so you can go ahead and get started working with it. So up front, I just give a little bit of introduction that this methodology uses geostats pi and geostats pi is the package that tries to basically reproduce what we got in geoslib the geostatistical library by deutsch and journal within python to enable us to use python to build our subsurface modeling workflows and so let's go ahead and get started of course we have blocks of documentation and we have blocks of code the block of code or blocks of code have these numbers on the side here that will show up as we run them and they have also the code in a little bit of a darker gray color the first step here we're just simply going to say let's import and use the install geostat pi package and so we do that we run that line now your run may take a little bit longer than mine mine just finished and the reason it ran fast is i previously ran this now for you you did not it may take more time because the first time it runs it's going to have to do some compilation of using numba package to speed up some of the numerics within the geostat pi package okay so we've got that we also want to work with the good old standard python packages numpy pandas for our data frames numpy for our nd arrays or grid data os so we can access the operating system set working directory so forth and matplotlib pyplot so we're able to do plotting and so we've done that i like to set the working directory whenever i'm working with my workflows and i do that specifically because i may have a complicated workflow where i load data from one place i save outputs to another place i like to specifically indicate where i'm working now of course if you've launched this workflow from a specific directory that'll be the default working directory for you let's go ahead and get started we'll load our tabular data up once again built into if you look pd is just simply pandas built into the pandas package we have a read csv that outputs a data frame and we said let's make df that data frame load a file sample data csv so if we run that nothing should have happened now you notice i made a quick change i had the wrong working directory but i'm good now and we load it nothing happened we didn't get an error or anything so we should be okay and so let's go ahead and confirm that we've in fact loaded this data frame. The best way to do that is to visualize the data frame. And so built into a data frame, we have the iLock command. The iLock command allows you to slice a data frame. And specifically, all you have to do is specify what rows do you want to extract and what columns do you want to extract. And so we're going to extract rows from 0 to 4, everything up to 5, so 0 to 4. And we're going to take all columns. This is a wildcard. It's saying all of the columns. Now we can also use the head command and say we want to print the first 13 records, records 0 through 12. We run this and we get the first part of it because we told it to print it. And we get the slice we took and we can preview that. The head command gives us a really neat, nicely formatted table to look at. Very easy to look at. We can go ahead and look and see that our data was in fact loaded correctly. If you go back to the original CSV file, you could open it up in TextPad, and it's quite straightforward. It's just a bunch of values separated by commas, and so it'd be very easy to check. All right, so of course we can do summary statistics. Before we do any type of spatial plotting, let's look at the summary statistics and see what's going on with the data. Built into Panda's data frames are the describe function, which will give us a whole variety of different summary statistics nicely formatted we use transpose because we just want to switch rows for columns so we get all of the features in the rows and of course all of the 
properties or metrics or statistics in the columns. You might disagree with that approach. You can remove the transpose and you just flip the table. Now you have all of the features in the columns. Easy enough to do. Now, of course, you could through and just calculated all of these statistics individually. It would have taken a long time, but you could have extracted the series like here, data frame, the name of the column. This would give you the series. You could do a values command right here and turn it into an ND array as we did in the previous lecture. And then we apply the min command, which is built in. It can take a series or an ND array and give you the minimum value of that. And you could do that over all of this statistics for all of the properties. And you could make this table much quicker, much quicker to run that one command described. Now, since we're working with spatial data, we need to set the X min, Y min, X max, Y max. We want to have a specific area of interest. We're, we are not rotating it. It's not complicated. And we want to set the minimum maximum values for the values that we're looking at, which are porosity at first, and give ourselves a color map. I choose the plasma color map because it is uh, friendly with colorblind people, I believe. It has an increase in intensity along with a change in tone over the scale. And it means that it, I think it will also view pretty good in black and white, unlike rainbow, which can be quite challenging. Now we're going to use the lock map function from GeostatPy, which is re-implementation of the location map program within GeostLive. It's made to have the same parameters, the same look and feel, and to be easy to use. And so we can just type the name of the command and hit run, and it will show us the various different parameters we need to work with. A data frame, the column for the X coordinate, the column for the Y coordinate, the column for the data values, the min and max in the X and Y directions, the variable min and max is the title of the plot, the axis title, or to go on the X and the Y axis, the label to go on the legend for the variable of interest, the color map we want to use, and a figure name so that you can actually directly save the file, display it in the screen, but also save it to a nice high resolution file. I've defaulted in TIFF, so you can load it up, send it for peer review publications at the 300 dots per inch or whatever high resolution you need to view. Now we can take our data, our data frame. We know we had an X and Y column, porosity value. We already set the X min, Y min, max, and so forth. We have the min and max for the porosity values. And we have all of the titles and the color maps and the name of the figure. And we go ahead and run that and we get this. And so now we can look at our data set. We can see that we have regularly sampled data with a few irregularly sampled locations and a few study plots where we've sampled at high resolution regular grids at very close spacings. And so this isn't bad. This is not a bad display. You can see what's going on. We put all our labels in. And so with one line of code, we've got everything we need to be able to look in two dimensions and post the data. And so this is pretty straightforward. Now, maybe you might be able to, we might be able to cut, tighten up the color bar a little bit. We know the min max values were not quite zero for porosity. And so we could rerun this with a bit of a tighten up color plot, color bar plot. And so we look at that now and perhaps we're seeing more information. We have more yellows now where we can distinguish what's going on locally with a little bit more understanding. Look at the study plot, look at the study plot. You can start to see more features this way. And so tightening up the color bar was useful to us. Now we can pick ranges for all of the other values or features that we're working with. Now you notice I don't just use the min max command directly with the data values. If you do that, you end up with a minimum value of acoustic impedance of 1238.5341 and so forth. And so you get kind of an awkward axis. It's got a lot of decimals in it. It's nice to clean it up and get something reasonable as far as the min max values for color display. We don't need a lot of decimals. And so we can go ahead and plot all of the location maps for all of the different variables that we're working with. And so we have facies, the porosity, the permeability, the acoustic impedance all shown here. They're all sampled at the same location. So you see we have the same locations that are shown, but the data values are changing significantly between them. They all have very different distributions and overall ranges. So now let's just load some gridded data. Now there's a variety of different ways to store gridded data in a file. And one of the most easy ways to do it is as a comma delimited set of rows and columns. 
And so this file right here is comma delimited. Every single row within the file is a row within the data. So it's very straightforward. You could in fact load this directly into Excel and use the conditional formatting and you would see the actual file. So very simple to work with. So there's a NumPy has a built-in loader that will load these types of comma delimited or space delimited, whatever delimiter you want to work with, directly into a into a ND array. So let's go ahead and load that in. So run it and we've loaded our seismic data in. It's acoustic impedance. And now we can take a look at what it looks like. Ah, so it is a two-dimensional array. That's cool. So we had a two-dimensional array in the common delimited file. It loads it in as two-dimensional. That's good news. We're, we're pretty good with working with something like that. We might also be interested in knowing the general shape or what's the extents, how many rows and columns. And so we can use the shape command on a two-dimensional array and it tells us NY is 100, NX is 100. So it's square, it's a 100 by 100 two-dimensional array. Remember NY, then NX, number of rows, number of columns. That's the way it works in Python. So we can go ahead and we can specify once again the min, max, spatially, and we'll do that specifically for this two-dimensional data set that we're working with. And we will also specify what's the size of the individual cells. And so if we have 0 through 1,000, 0 through 1,000, and the cells are 10 units, so this could be meters, 1 kilometer by 1 kilometer, and 10 meter cells, we would expect to have a 100 by 100 number of cells. So this works out perfectly. Now we're ready to try to plot it. Now, pixel plot is a re-implementation of the pixel plot from GeoSlide in the GeostatPy package. We can go ahead and look at the variables or parameters that are passed into it, the two-dimensional array, the min and max and the x and y direction, the size of the cell, the, ex the extents of the variable for min, max, for the purpose of the color bar, the title, the x, la the x label, the y label, the variable label itself on the color legend, the color bar map that we're using, the color map that's being used. In our case, we we're working with the plasma bar, and then the figure name for the high resolution figure that'll be saved at 300 dots per inch in a TIFF file. And you can go in and edit that if you want to edit that in the package. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Okay, acoustic impedance, it goes between 1000, 8000, looks pretty handy. Things look pretty good. It's got some spatial continuity and so forth. That's pretty useful. We can now look at that information. Now, you might want to visualize simultaneously a continuous representation, a pixel plot, and a location map all at the same time. So LockPix is a program that in fact does that. It will combine the data array, the two-dimensional array, knowing its extents, the cell sizes, the variable ranges, and then it will go ahead and take a data frame with locations, variable values at those locations, and it'll put it all together into one plot. So let's take all of our information and put it into a locks pick, picks plot. And so you can see this is pretty useful. We now see the acoustic impedance information sampled at the wells versus what was sampled over the entire model from the seismic original seismic data inverted. And this is pretty powerful because now we can get a sense of what's going on as far as the actual values. Do they match between seismic and well data? We might even want to plot different values against each other. Well, there's of course infinite number of things you can do with plotting. I've shown how to plot specifically location maps with data frames. I've shown how to plot continuous two-dimensional ND arrays with more of like a pixel plot type of look. What else could we do? Well, there's so many things we can manipulate our data. And so here's an example of what we've done. We've, we've said, let's go ahead and segment the data into high porosity if greater than 12%, low porosity if less than 12%. And let's go ahead and plot that. That's an indicator transform. And we can go ahead and look and see what we've got as far as the results. Now, I should note that it's a true indicator transform would assign one if less than 0.12 threshold, but it is like it's a binary transform of the data into one or zero. 
And so this is very useful because now we can look all over the place and say, okay, where we've got yellow, we've got high porosity, where we've got blue, we've got low porosity, and we get a sense of segmentation of this area based on a specific threshold value. Now there's so much more that we can do in data visualization. Now I wanna be transparent about the fact that I have used Geostat Pi, which basically is just re-implementing matplotlib for visualization. And I've done that simply because with that method, I can give you a single command, lock map, that uses the same parameters you would have used within the original GSLib and it's very easy to operate, very easy to use. Now, if you want to do more advanced type custom plotting, by all means, look at the code that I've used here. Look at, you'll see maybe it's four or five lines of code for that lock map plot. You can make more edits, make it more customized using matplotlib. Or you could get into using ggplot2 or other types of plotting methodologies, Seaborn for more kind of statistical plots and so forth. There's so many different things you can do within Python for plotting. I just kept it very simple, just the bare essentials here to be able to plot and look at tabular data and also mapped or gridded data in 2D. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. I am Michael Perch, an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm also the Geostat guy on Twitter, on YouTube, Geostat guy lectures, and also on GitHub. I share a lot of resources. I'm always happy to discuss. Reach out if you've got a question. I'm also happy to collaborate. I've got lots of great students who are interested in working with companies and always happy to collaborate and work with companies. Always happy to come visit, give lectures, mentor, review projects, teach consultants, so forth. So, all right. I hope this was helpful to you. All right. Take care.